Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Happy Children's Day to everyone. We are all children. Happy Children's Day to everyone. You are all, you, today, everybody is a member of the children's department. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. We want to take a moment to thank the pastor, Dr. Henry, and the leadership for creating the opportunity for the children and the youth to celebrate and be celebrated. Thank you. We do not take it for granted. It's a special privilege for me to be able to bring the word to us. I just want to share on the word I've titled, The Lord is my keeper. The Lord is my keeper. Psalm 121, verse 5, is our key test. The Lord is my keeper. But I'll read, say, the Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. If you take it to verse 1, sir, I want to read the whole psalm. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from where comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall not, neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are going to look at that psalm. This Psalm 121, from Psalm 120 to count, you count 15 afterwards, those 15 psalms, they are called the Psalms of the Ascents or the Psalms of the Pilgrims or the Psalms of Degrees. It was made very popular by the famous missionary to Africa, David Livingstone, because he was going to go to a known place. He was afraid. They had heard stories. But he read this psalm and he was encouraged. And he boldly said, I'm ready to go forward. I'm ready to go anywhere as long as he's forward. That is like burning his bridges behind him. I'm not going back from this mission. Because he had declared to himself that the Lord would keep him. Hallelujah. He has a testimony that he did a lot of work in Africa. And he ended up exploring as well. This was also the songs. This, this, these psalms are a group of songs that were popularly sung by the people of God to both express their confidence, reliance, and trust on their Yahweh, his ability to protect and preserve them, whilst at the same time to suppress any fear that, that may well up in their minds whilst going through the hills physical or spiritual, especially physical then for them. Yesterday, I drove to a place very close to Newcastle. That is, um, I didn't know how to say the name. They had to teach me. I was also the, you know, Ka Kalai. Yes, Kalai. That's what it's called. That's not how it's spelled, though. Yes, it's a, trick. it's a tricky one. But it's not far from Newcastle. I took Sophie with me on the journey. When we were going, at, at a point, I realized Sophie kept turning her head all of a sudden. And then she grabbed my phone and was doing, and she went, what's all that? And she, I looked, at, because I was driving, I went, the clouds? She said, no. And then, it occurred to me, it's like we were being swallowed by hills or mountains. Or, I mean, it was scary for me. It, because it was like a stretch of no end. Hills after hills. You know, they, and Sophie said, these are the mountains. We do them in geography. I went, okay, you know, I'm very local to Northampton. It's my first time, 20 years in England, for going beyond Birmingham, you see. So, <laughs> so never been, but it was amazing. And in my awe, I went, how did they get there? She went, mom, God put them there. So I could feel a bit of what those Israelites felt. If it was a challenging time, if they were being dragged to unknown lands, 
and there were hills and mountains. Uncertainty. They were not sure. But singing this song elevate, uh, helped to alleviate their fears. It set their heart at rest. That even though they might not understand what's behind the mountains, but they knew the God who created the mountains. He was on their side, so it was okay. Praise the name of the Lord. I did a little bit of research, and I realized that the word keeper and his, very, his other variants, to keep Keeping kept, they appear 469 times in the Bible. 469 times. And it means to protect, to preserve, to watch over, to tend. Like God told Adam, tend the Garden of Eden. To build it, to make sure it's beautiful. To take responsibility for, to look out for. You know, like when God told Cain, where is your brother? And Cain said, am I my brother's keeper? That keeper means... To where is someone you are supposed to be responsible for? And he knew what God said. Am I responsible for him? We are supposed to be our brother's keeper. The beauty of the scripture is that when we read it, we have assurance that everything that God says we should do, every description and every word is what God is to us first of all. So, we, we know in the children's church and we are telling the adults' church that the Lord is your keeper. He's your protector. He's your preserver. You know, one of the verses says he will preserve your soul. I was listening to one preacher talk to, teach about what, Psalm 1 to 1 and he referred to Jude Duzology, the last verse of Jude. He said, God is able to keep your soul to the very end, to the uttermost. So even if you feel what's going to happen later, even your soul, God is able to preserve it. Glory be to Jesus. To be very specific and direct, we're going to ask and answer three questions about God being our keeper. Question one, when did God begin to keep you? When did he become your keeper? When did he start? We'll find our answers in the pages of the scriptures. Jeremiah 1.5, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. Isaiah 49 verse 1b also echoes it. Before I was born, the Lord chose me and appointed me his servant. So the answer to question one, when did he become your keeper? God became your keeper before you were formed in the womb. Before you were born. So even before you became aware that you would need a keeper, he already was your keeper. Glory be to Jesus. So you were being put together. And God already said, I'm your keeper. Question two. So after you were born, who took over the keeping of your life? Who became your keeper? Asking this in the children's department, I can just see the really young one. My mom, my dad, my auntie, my sister. My nan, you know, those are co-keepers. Those are co-laborers with God. Because Isaiah 49, 15 to 16, if media can put that up for us, please. Isaiah 49, 15. Say, can a woman forget her nursing child and not have compassion on the son of her womb? Surely they may forget. God said it's possible, but yet I will not forget you. Why? I have inscribed you. I like this version. I have inscribed you on the palms of my hand. Your walls are continually before me. Continually, definition means never ending. Always. It's a part participle. Those who teach English. It's a continuous word. Hallelujah. It's continuing itself. That's who God is for us. He has a graving us upon his uh, palm of his hand. And Psalm 34, 15, and 1 Peter 3, 2, both of those verses, they say the same thing. Psalm 34, 15. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears attentive to their cry. 
the eyes of the Lord, 34, 15, the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. And his ears are open to their crown. One of my all-time favorite verses of the Bible, 2 Chronicles 16, 9, say the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth, searching to show himself strong on behalf of those whose hearts appear toward him. Another one say, who totally depend on him. Say, for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of them. You know, in the children's department, we have proof and evidence that God is strong on our behalf. That God shows himself strong. The children know like they know that the Lord is their keeper. So the answer to the question, who became your keeper after you were born? Even after you were born, the Lord carries on being your keeper. He doesn't leave keeping you to your parents. What if they fall asleep? What if they forget? Because we do sleep, don't we, as parents? So it's only the God, the one who does not slumber, nor sleep. He's the one that can really, truly keep you. And he will keep your parents as well. And keep your keepers here on earth. He's the overall keeper of all of us all. The last question, question three. When will God stop keeping you? When will he give up? Bless you, sir. We have the answers from the verses of the Bible. Hebrews 13, 5. God has said, I will never leave you, nor forsake you. I will never leave you, nor forsake you. Matthew 28, 20. Matthew 28, 20. This was part of the farewell message of Jesus to his disciples as he was leaving. Everything was done. He was leaving. And the last bit of that says, and surely, surely, this one says, and lo. King James says, and surely, I am with you always to the very end of the age. So, from before you were born, now that you're living, you might face hills, upheavals. You might face all sorts of hills and mountains of life. A songwriter wrote, the God of the mountain is the God of the valley. Hallelujah. What a blessed assurance that if you walk to the valley of the shadow of the death, you will not be afraid. Why? Because the Lord is with you. The Lord is your God. He preserves you. So our children, they know that God is their keeper. God has helped them. Whether it's God, the Holy Spirit telling them to move and the person who was coming slipped and fell down or whether somebody cut their hand when they were trying or hit the, or whatever. It was not the children who wanted that. It wasn't even God who did that. But the thing that, when, that the children know is that God will go to any length, do everything, put away gadgets from front of them, protect them, preserve them. God is their keeper. So they are saying to the other church today, God is your keeper. You are co-keepers, yeah? But God is the keeper of you, the keeper of us. He's the keeper of keepers. Amen. So in one last sentence of concluding this uh, charge, from before you were born, now as you live from day to day, facing those mountains, those hills, and until the end of the age, the Lord is your keeper. Praise God. Praise God. I sang a song in first service. I just want to sing that song again. Because while I was meditating on putting this charge together, that song came to me. It's a very old one. If he carried the weight of the world upon his shoulders, I know my brother that he will carry you. He will carry you. If he carry the weight of the world upon his shoulders. I know my sister. I know my sister 
was that he would carry you he would carry you yeah. if he carried the weight of the world upon his shoulders I know my brother I know my brother that he will carry you. Lord, we thank you because regardless of what we face, mountains don't just wake up and move. There are things that we may be going through we may have gone through them for years and they feel like mountains. They feel like hills. But we can look beyond the hills and focus our eyes on you because you will come through. The longer we wait, the greater the testimony is going to be. Thank you, Jesus, because we can trust you, our keeper, our helper, you continue to preserve us and those breakthroughs those testimonies that we have rehearsed again and again in our hearts it won't be long before we come and share them before the people of God because you are keeper our tender the one who's responsible for us the one who tends our lives you will bring this testimony to us thank you because you will keep us forever in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.